never mind. Let's try again. Hello and welcome. My name is Will Bizard, and today I'm going to be showing you how I lay out and draw my uh, scalloped fretboard in Rhinoceros. So, as you can see, got a few fretboards here that I've already drawn out. Um, if you want to know how to get to this point, uh, I have a, another video up uh, that was posted previously that'll take you um, at least this far, I do believe. So, um, just to quickly describe uh, what I'm going to do next and what I've done so far that uh, deviates beyond the previous video um, is basically that I've just taken these uh, end corners and divided them into thirds. Um, and that is because I like my scallop to go down uh, and touch the... Uh, that's not the right words. That's how far down I like my scallop to go. I think that that's a really uh, kind of a sweet spot. You know, you get, you get enough scallop uh, that it's definitely scalloped, but it's not so much that we're completely, you know, uh, rendering the fretboard useless in the structure of the neck. So I've divided them into thirds and I've marked a line across that one third point. Um, the next step is going to be to take all of these, sorry, take this line that I'm throwing around uh, and copy it to the end points of where the frets will be. Okay, now we have done that. Um, the purpose is going to be the purpose of these lines is to segment this line that I have made. Um, and that is, the purpose of that is to make the center points on either side of the fretboard between the frets easily locatable so that we can then uh, draw some arcs. So, um, our next thing to do is to use the split command um, and select the objects we want to split. Okay, those have been selected. And I'm going to pick out all these little lines here. And we've split. Check that out. I'm going to go ahead and do it over here too because these are both fretboards that I'm going to be running in the next week. One of them for a client, one of them for me. <laughs> things they're disgusting get them out of here but really from this point forward they don't serve us any kind of purpose And then, uh, I need to, so what we're going to do next is offset the line that the frets, the lines that mark the fret positions, um, a particular distance, which, um, I don't remember exactly what I, what I did in the past, uh, but I, luckily I keep every drawing nearby. Uh, let's go to a perpendicular point or nearly perpendicular point. OK, 
But yeah, 0 0.07, 0 0.14. I think that's just, that's just like, man, maybe 10 or 20 thousandths beyond the total um, thickness or width of the frets that I'm going to use. Um, oh, well, that is annoying. Okay. Um, yeah, so, or, you know what? I, I can't say this with confidence, but I'm pretty sure that it is exactly the width of the frets that I use because I'm anticipating that I'm going to sand, you know, these crowning points a little bit. Um, although I, I know it'll be minimal. Um, I want to start as close to, you know, uh, that, that final dimension as I can, um, but not be beyond it because if we start larger than it, it's just going to continue to get larger as we sand material um, so uh, because it's this is being stubborn we have to use offset curve on surface oh christ So, we're pretty much there. Um, the next step is to use the arc command. <coughs> In a handful of places, we're going to use, let's see, um, start point end. And we're going to go from that portion of the fret shelf and then the middle of our segmented lines and then the end other end of the shelf so three quick motions just like that we do it on both sides because they are a different shape on either side of each other and then we can select these lines and trim everything that's inside. And then we can use network surface and boom, we got a crisp uh, compound radius scallop in our fretboard that is nearly ready for machining uh all you have to do is you know to, to all i have to do to finish this is to repeat that process all the way down the neck um which would probably take another six seven minutes um clean it up make those new surfaces and we are done um you know, b before machining, I would trim this line about 70, 80 thousandths inside the profile um, for that br blind fret slot look. And we're done. Um, and now that, you know, this doesn't illustrate really the uh, limitations of this technique. You can do it half the distance. I mean, we could do... Um, Something like what I've seen on Ormsby's, where, you know, we've got the full depth of the scallop there, um, but uh, then it goes up in a radius fashion, 
How could we do that? I think I know how I would do this. Okay, yeah. I've actually never done this before. We're gonna interpolate curve on surface. We're gonna do it on this surface. We're gonna go from this point. Um, draw a new line here so I can see the center point. Interpolate, mid, oh fuck yeah, that works. So, uh, yeah, we can do all kinds of like goofy shit if we want. Um, probably, probably put a line between the two midpoints. Do network surface again. There. Now we've got like a some kind of weird quarter scallop. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Rhino's sick, um, and so is my fretboard. Thanks for watching.